Hi guys, welcome back to a case of econ struggles. Today we're talking about area of the root equilibrium with uncertainty still, but now we are going from one period to an infinite number of periods. This video we're going to go through the setup, but particularly we're going to talk about event histories versus states of the world. Let's go ahead and get into it. For the setup of this problem, it's exactly as we had before. So we still have Bill and Dave. The only good in this world is a coconut, and they are going to live for an infinite number of periods. The trading is going to be the same as the initial area of the root equilibrium, so they can trade IOUs across both states and time now. Bill and Dave still each have a coconut tree. Their coconut tree reacts differently to different states of the world or different types of weather. We live in upstate New York. State of New York can be sunny and we make dry coconuts or it can be snowy and we have frozen coconuts. We'll denote sunny by s equals one and snowy by s equals two on any given day. It could either be sunny or snowy with a 50% probability of each type of weather. We know from that previous video that even though we're just talking about coconuts, all coconuts are not not equal. So if we've got a frozen coconut, it's worthless in the sun. And if we've got a dry coconut, it's worthless in the snow. So we talked in detail about what that means for both Bill and Dave. We've talked about Bill and Dave wanting to smooth consumption across states. And we've talked about Bill and Dave wanting consumption smooth across time independently. But now that Bill and Dave live forever, they can consumption smooth across both states and time. And we will see in the solution that Bill and Dave indeed want to smooth consumption across time. That consumption smoothing is going to be related to their endowment. It's also going to be related to the probability about each type of weather. Now that Bill and Dave both live forever, it's important to talk about what's called the event history set or big S superscript T. So I've written out just a little example based on a three period example where we can be sunny or snowing in a given day. So what I want you to focus on is that say we're at time equals two and it's sunny today. So we're at this part right here. This sunny at time equals two is different than this sunny at time equals two because in the first example we were snowy at time equals one and in the second example we were sunny at time equals one. So these are different event histories and because they're different event histories you have to treat day two's weather differently depending on what happened before. So again this is called the event history set big S superscript T and it contains all the little s superscript T's or all the event histories. All the event histories belong to the event history set. That's the difference between little s and big S superscript T. And again, if we just have this three period example, we have two possible weathers in each day. So the probability of all of these event histories or each of these event histories, little s superscript T is just 12.5%. Now that we've talked about the event history set, let's talk about event histories versus states of the world. So like I just alluded to, a history S superscript T is the weather sequence from T equals zero up to and including today. So if we have two possible weathers, the number of event histories that we could have is just two to the T. So for example, we had three periods. So we had eight possible event histories. States of the world are little s subscript T and that's just the weather today. So if we have two different weather options, sunny and snowy, we have two options on any given day. We just talked about the fact that big S superscript T is the set of all little s superscript T. The event history set is just the set of all possible event history. To give a quick example, let's say that today is Wednesday and T equals zero, we'll say it was Monday. Let's also say that today is it's snowy, so we would say that S subscript T, or the weather today, S subscript Wednesday, is snow, or this blue star. The event history, S superscript T, would then be the weather on Monday, Tuesday, and today on Wednesday. So maybe it's been sunny, sunny, and today it's snowy, so that would be our event history. Now, big S superscript T, or the event history set, would be the eight possible options that we could have experienced in terms of weather between Monday and Wednesday. So we had sun, sun, snow. It could have been the case that it was snow, sun, snow, and you can think of the other combinations I didn't write here. You would put all those combinations into a set, and that's what we call the event history set. Now that we've taken care of that, let's return to deriving the budget constraint in an infinite period problem. Notice it's going to be the same as before. The only difference is rather than just summing up over state for one period, we now also take the sum over the infinite time period, so t equals zero to infinity, but otherwise it's going to look exactly the same before. We still have different prices for each event history, and we still have different consumptions for different event histories. For the final part of this video, let's just define an era de Brew equilibrium for this economy for an infinite period problem. So an era de Brew equilibrium is just an allocation. Notice now that the allocation is for every state, but also for every time period from t equals zero to infinity. Same thing with prices. Every state of the world, one to n, in our case it's one to two, t equals zero to infinity for every time period. The utility maximization problem, again, we're 
we're just adding this time period here and here. So we're choosing a consumption for each person in every state of the world in every time period. And our budget constraint is exactly what you think it would be based on what we just talked about. Our market clearing condition also looks similar. It's not just for every event history, it's also for every time period. So in the next video, we'll start talking about first order conditions and what it means in terms of the answer. If this was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.